<laughs> Just wait. Just wait. And they have to take over. Here's the gas. Oh, this is yours. This is yours. Take it. We're good? Oh, I see him. Yes. All right. Okay. Good evening, good evening. We will call this meeting of the Beaumont Economic Development Committee to order promptly here at 4.01 p.m. At this time, I'll ask Ms. Wilwright if you would please call the roll. Councilmember White? I'm here. Councilmember Lara? City Manager Elizabeth Gibbs is at a conference today. She may be on Zoom. Economic Development Manager Kyle Warzinski. Here. Chair Von Lawson. Present. Vice Chair Betty Rader. Here. Member Dustin Nershall. Member Steve Melman. Here. Member Evan Brown stated he would not be able to attend this evening. Member Rob Moran. Here. Member Christopher Glider, Glider um, sent in an email stating that he would be resigning from the committee effective immediately. Alternate member Richard Benneke um, sent in a request for an excused absent. Alternate member Ron Rader. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilwright. Do we have any actions of additional request for excused absences? I have none. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask Member Moran, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, sir? Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Member Moran. Ms. Wilwright, do we have any adjustments to the agenda, please? None that I have. Do you have any, Kyle? Thank you. Are there any conflict of interest disclosures that have been uh, notated? Not to me. Right. With that, we will move on. Oh, you know, before we get started, let me say this uh, very quickly. If I've not had the chance to shake your hand or hug your neck or wish you blessings, happy 2023. You all look absolutely fantastic. <laughs> you are wearing it so incredibly well. And I don't mind telling you I've missed you. Uh, so it is so good to have the Economic Development Committee back together assembled. So happy 2023. If I've not had a chance, I've, I got a chance to get a, a wonderful hug from this young lady here and shake her husband's hand. Uh, but uh, certainly we want to wish you a happy 2023. This is the year uh, for us, 2023. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, that said, uh, Ms. Wilwright, and you'll apologize, uh, uh, forgive my, my deviation. We'll move on to public comments, please. Um, I have no written comments, um, no requests. Rudy, do we have any callers on the line? Are there any public comments? Um, I think we may have lost connection with our public comment line. So I will send him a message. If we have any, then I'll let you know. We'll come back right. Hearing Thank none you. at this time, then we're going to move on to item C, which is our action items, our public hearing request. And one of these areas, which is one uh, I am excited to, to delve into here, introduction of our new committee members. 
Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to go around and introduce ourselves. Uh, since I have the loudest country voice in here, I'll, uh, I'm going to defer first as a Southern boy to our ladies that are on the uh, panel. So here to my left, young lady, would you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Betty Rader, and I'm currently the executive director for the Beaumont Chamber of Commerce. All right. I think you all all know me, and as the, as the uh, old uh, song goes, if you don't know me by now, you'll probably never know me, but I'm Vaughn. <laughs> And I'm blessed to serve and represent you uh, from Mount San Jacinto Co uh, College, where I serve as one of the deans of instruction. And I'm also a proud resident of Beaumont right here since 2014. So uh, I'm going to defer to uh, the left, uh, my left here to the room to this distinguished gentleman here. Hi, I'm Lloyd White, City Council Member, City of Beaumont, and I did just get a text from Elizabeth. She and um, Christina are on Zoom. Yes, I see that. Wasn't sure if we could see them, so I can't see that. We have we have someone up on on the uh, screen. All right, Miss Worsensky. Yes. The there, she there she is. <laughs> My apologies. I was having internet connection. I'm traveling. Welcome, Miss Gibbs. Can you hear us? Yes, I can now. I had to switch to my phone. All right. Would you introduce yourselves to the uh, to the committee here, please? Sure. My name is Elizabeth Gibbs, and I'm the city manager for the city of Beaumont, and I'm actually uh, at a city manager's conference right now. Fantastic. We hope you're having safe travels. I'll now defer to our... Thank you. Kyle Wersinski, the economic development manager here at the city of Beaumont. All right. And then this distinguished gentleman here to my right. Ron Rader, uh, Sam Gordon Memorial Hospital Board of Directors, Treasurer, and Secretary. Right, sir. Steve Melman, new member. Yes, sir. And then, of course, this wonderful young lady. I am Nicole Wheelwright. I'm the Deputy City Clerk. All right. I think we've introduced everybody uh, that's on that's serving currently on the board. All right. Christine yes, Taylor was up there. I am so sorry, uh, Member Taylor. Okay, perhaps we've lost her, and we'll, we'll introduce her once uh, if we're I'm ready. here. Oh, there we are. Chairman. Ms. Taylor, I, I, would you I'm introduce not a, yourself? I'm not an official member, so I wasn't going to chime in, but Christina Taylor, Deputy City Manager here as staff support to the uh, to the committee. Absolutely. We consider you an absolute valuable resource, so it's important that they know you, without a doubt. Thank you so much. That said, now, again, another area uh, for me that's... I think I'm excited about. We're going to have a reorganization of the committee. It's time to select a new chair and a new vice chair for 2023. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to ask uh, that we open the nominations for the position of chair. Excuse me, Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, could I? Could we start with discussion first? Oh yes. Um, how do we? If we have a member who's left, how do we promote a alternate? Um, that has to be done through council. Um, so my plan is um, we have applications or the application form open online right now. I'm hoping that we might get an application or two. Um, and at the next city council meeting, I can bring this back. It was a topic I was going to bring up. I can bring this back to the council meeting to where council can appoint the alternates to the um, I thought we had discussed that the, the committees could appoint an alternate. It didn't have to come back to council if there was already an alternate. Um, we we can if that's it's kind of a gray area. So I've um, in discussing it with John um, Pinkney, the city attorney, um, because council makes all of the appointments and the removals. Um, he thought it was best that council appoint. Um, members in that manner uh, okay. but we can ask again because like I said it is kind of a gray area uh, yeah I'm just at, I know we had a discussion about this on council so when you do bring what you said you're going to bring to council can you bring the uh, discussion of enabling the committees to to assign their others uh, otherwise mm -hmm. we have to sometime might have to wait a month two months sure. to move somebody up to uh, mm -hmm. you know and if, if they're already showing up for meetings you know, why wait? Just right. my personal opinion. Thank you, Chair. That was Good my point. Question. No problem at all, sir. 
That's I would it. like to make a nomination, though. The chair recognizes. I'd Mr. like White. to nominate uh, Betty Rader as our new chair. Absolutely. Additional nominations? Well, I was going to nominate I, Steve. We have uh, two nominations, additional nominations to the position of chair. If. Um, Thank you, Willie. Yes, if, sir. As much as I appreciate it, I have to decline. All right. Too much going on. We totally understand. So Mr. Melman has, has declined. We still have Ms. Rader, uh, who has been nominated. Additional nominations? Uh, Betty, with your nominating Steve, were you saying you didn't want the position? No, I chair? wasn't saying okay. that. I was just saying that. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm sure Steve would be a very good Does committee. He? Yeah, I hear they're not allowing me to move fast through this uh, nomination part. Uh, additional nominations twice. <laughs> additional nominations. Hearing none, then we'll close the nominations. Uh, since we have uh, Ms. Uh, Rader serve, uh, who has been nominated, would it be necessary for us to take uh, a vote uh, for the record? Yes, All please. right. Uh, then, Ms. Uh, Wilwright, uh, I'm going to ask, uh, this will be an easy one, that you call uh, for, for the vote, please. Forgive me, I am writing down the members that are here versus my list. <laughs> okay. Member Lawson? I with pleasure. <laughs> Member Rader? Yes. Member Moran? Yes. Member White? Yes. Member Morzinski? Yes. Member Melman? Yes. And I think that's it. We're good. It is with absolute pleasure that I hand over. Can we just, can we just discuss it? Yes. Um, I, I can move over. No, no, no. All right. Uh, I need you right here. Aren't you going to finish out the meeting? It, is that how we would normally handle it? Uh, but I, I think this young lady is more than capable. It can be done however you, well, however yes. you please. <laughs> but we also need to nominate a vice chair. And I, I would like to make a nomination for vice chair. Uh, seeing that Betty's already the chair, Steve has declined the chair position. Is that uh, also with the uh, vice chair too? Right not. Okay. Um, I can't serve as chair or vice chair. Um, so I would like to nominate Rob Moran as the vice chair. I, you gotta help me. Oh, I'm sorry. Ad additional nominations. Okay, additional nominations. Shall we have a vote? Yep. Member Lawson. Absolutely, aye. Member Rader. Yes. Member Moran. Yes. Member White. Yes. Member Warzinski. Yes. Member Melman. Yes. All right. May I say something? Oh, I forgot she's chair now. Yes. <laughs> the reason I declined, uh, some of you may have read in the paper last week that I'm trying to organize a senior collaborative here in the pass area, similar to one uh, in Coachella Valley. And Congressman Ruiz has asked me to do that. So that's going to take a whole lot of my time. That's why I declined, but I, I appreciate consideration. You, you were afraid I was going to go to Mary, is what you were afraid. It's not to go to hockey games? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's too expensive. <laughs> Next, we will move to the approval of the minutes. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? It'll be the minutes from November. And I will move to approve the minutes. Second. Is there any further discussion? Shall we take a vote? Member Lawson? Yes. Member Rader? Yes. Member Moran? Yes. Member White? Yes. Member Warzinski? Yes. Member Melman? Abstain. Uh, we move on to reports. 
We have people in the audience. Are they going to speak? Or are they part of you, Kyle? We can definitely Kyle's ask them to speak. This. I'm somewhat yes. upset that they didn't want to introduce themselves. Uh, as I, our, our I was going to call them out, Mr. Warsinski. <laughs> I, I just had not had a chance yet, but I was going to definitely call so them out. So before I, I do have a report that I was going to give an update on our, our business incentive program, but I'd love for, for each of our planning staff members to get up and uh, introduce themselves. We do have a couple new ones uh, in addition to our planning manager, Carol Kendrick. So let's give them a, a chance to introduce themselves so that everyone knows who they are. Hi, I'm Carol Kendrick. I'm the planning manager with the city of Beaumont. Um, we have our uh, two fairly new assistant planners, Katie Jensen and Jillian Fountain. And I just wanted to um, have them come see how EDC works. We can see your faces. You can see our faces and know that we're available to assist on any planning issues. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, shall we go back to reports and start with Kyle? Thank you. So I don't know how many meetings ago. I think it was the December meeting or possibly the November meeting. The EDC recommended to city council that they approve the, um, the downtown incentive package that we had been working on. And council went ahead and did that. And since that day, staff has been working on the guidelines and the policies, real, the framework on how those programs are actually going to get put into implementation and in, into place. So with that, I have, I passed them out. I also have it available on my screen. So if um, the, the IT room can show my screen. First is the incentive program area. Um, it was a little bit hard to de describe via letters or, or words on paper. So we went ahead and, and created a map. So. The downtown programs are available to eligible businesses and properties within this uh, boundary. It's much easier than trying to say it's from the freeway to Pennsylvania and on 6 and also maybe not on 6 if it's on Maple. So this will this will keep in mind. So the next item how do I change I don't know how to drive on this thing. Let's go to page two. There we go. So page two is our fee waiver program, and that's in which council approved reduction in fees in order to, um, you can't see it? Oh, should I act it out? Okay. All right, so this is just simple flyers that we've created for each of these programs. They're going to be put on the website shortly, and we're also going to have them available. Um, hopefully, Betty will allow us to, to have them at the chamber so that people looking for these can, can grab them. We'll have them available here at City Hall as well, and then Absolutely. start posting them on, on social media. But this is for the, the fee waiver program. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just for the pre-application review as well as the building investigation review, and we've had couple businesses already asked, hey, when are you launching this thing? So this is the flyer we're going to use for that one. Uh, next item is our downtown facade improvement program. So this is a simple flyer we created for this one. It just kind of highlights what it's all about. Um, you can't scan that QR code now because it doesn't work. That's just a placeholder from when we create the QR code, which is going to link to the city website where they can pick up the application. Um, and the program guidelines and also have our contact info in case they have any questions and so forth. So this one has a map attached. Um, the next one's our business attraction program. <coughs> and it highlights the different eligible business categories that uh, would be able to apply for these grant funds. Um, four of them, the maximum dollar amount is or $25,000 and that's for premium casual, bars and cocktail lounges, entertainment, and then breweries, distilleries, and small alcohol production. And then fine dining can apply for up to $50,000 in grant funds to help start their business or day-to-day -day costs, et cetera. 
So this one has a map attached to the back. This one has a little bit more detail on it in terms of kind of what we're looking uh, for and, and what they would need to do in order to qualify. Um, on the back is uh, the proposal ratings. So as, as staff reviews these and ultimately makes recommendations to city council on applicants, whether we want to recommend um, funding them or not funding them, uh, will be based on these proposal rating requirements here. And then the next one, I have these for every program, but I didn't want to to just bring a bunch of them, which is just a sample of our application. So we've tried to make it pretty straightforward, very user friendly, um, and straight to the point in terms of what we're looking for on this, the facade, and, and the like. So we're gonna have these on the website and also available here at City Hall. If, you, if businesses need, we can print them out and they can fill them out by hand as well. And then lastly, we have the flyer for the sewer defeat, sewer connection fee deferral program. Same types of businesses, ones that uh, we've targeted that we really think will help stimulate and spur development within the downtown also end up having a high sewer connection fee by chance. So this fee uh, program allows them to defer their connection for two years the previous grant program is a forgivable grant uh, if they stay in business and they operate for a period of uh, three or five years respectively to the dollar amount that they're seeking. So that concludes my report. Just a simple update. We plan to be launching these programs um, formally, I would think next week. Is kind of we're getting everything situated on the website, getting ready for press releases and so forth. So I anticipate by end of next week these programs should be launched if everything goes well. Uh, there is one other program, which is the Grease Trap Grease Interceptor program for existing restaurants within the downtown area. Uh, we did not create a flyer for them because there's only a finite number and we're going to be proactively reaching out to each of those explaining the program. Uh, versus the need to make a flyer um, because it's only a set amount that can apply for that program. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Um, shall we go around to each member here and see if they have a report? Lloyd? Um, I do have questions for Mr. Okay. Morsinski's report. Okay. Um, so you mentioned when you got to the last flyer that um, unlike the grant program, which was um, a forgivable. Ex can you explain that? And is that for all of these other um, programs or are some of these programs not grants? You know, can you sort of give me a, a reminder of what, what we have here? Yes. So the fee waivers are simple fee waivers. Okay. So that's, you can treat it as a grant, but we're just not taking in money. Okay. For those programs. The facade program is that $1 to $1 match grant, not repaid. Okay. The business attraction or expansion program is a grant for businesses to come here or to expand, but it's, for, it's called a forgivable loan. Okay. So if someone's seeking up to $25,000, $25 $25 or less, that loan amount is forgiven after the period of three years. And if they're seeking the 50,000 for a fine dining, then the forgiven, forgiveness period is five years. Okay. And, um, and then the deferral one... defers their, they can start business and they need to pay their connection fee within two years of opening. Got it. Okay. And just one last comment. I think it's really important um, when you go with your launch and press release that we get this in the uh, something decent in the press enterprise not just uh, Got it. record gazette but we need to reach out to all of riverside county and, and make a big you know i don't know if it's a press release followed with some ads but um, i think something to let people know that when you're thinking about where you're going to open a business um, we're going to help you here excellent 
I was even thinking of possibly paying for ad space in the Inland Empire magazine, maybe taking a full page ad on that one. You know, it might be good. I don't know if um, our neighbors would be happy with it just to put an ad up on their uh, digital billboard outside of Banning. <laughs> <laughs> I will inquire to see the pricing of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Was uh, there any discussion on the prevailing wage, Kyle, for the facade? Um, those are in the actual policies and the guidelines. Um, I can tell you the read digest version is we have dove into. Uh, Before you go any further, I'm sorry to interrupt, but can you give everyone a background of what she's asking about? Yes. So. Council approved the frameworks of the programs, right? For So specifically for the facade improvement, the city is going to be giving out uh, public funds for private use. And when we were developing the program in terms of the legals, we had to, to ensure that labor laws and, and other types of laws throughout the state of California are, are being met and are being complied with. So in that scenario, we found that Projects less than a thousand dollars are not subject to prevailing wage, but any project over that thousand dollar limit is subject to prevailing wage. So that is in our policy. Um, the facade one requires uh, three bids to be submitted um, from different contractors. Uh, those should be prevailing wages on those. We we looked for exclusions. Um, uh, in terms of what the law allows for and what it doesn't allow for. And it, it's very specific that construction being done even by a third party, because we technically aren't hiring the contractor. We were thinking, well, maybe that that would uh, factor in. Um, but it, the law is very clear. It said if a third party is doing it with public funds, then prevailing wage law does apply. So that's kind of where we're at on that one. And we're more than happy to answer questions on, on that policy guideline um, and all the other programs as well as, as businesses are interested in these programs as we move forward. Thank you, Kyle. And, and can I make a comment to that? Um, we've had the discussion with prevailing wages, um, I think, on RCTC as well as here, and that was a concern. Um, but with today's labor market, the prevailing wages are not that much different from the competitive wages. Um, you may have looked into it already and found that, that there is significant difference. But because of the demand and the, um, as you probably know, the um, lack of supply for, mm -hmm. for builders and contractors, that the pricing is not as much a difference as it has been in the past. Um, I don't know that personally. I just have heard that as part of the okay. discussion. So. Yeah, what I was told is it would increase my cost about 50%. Okay. And so that means that my, with the city participation, my cost would still increase 25%. So. Got it. it okay. It was, you know, kind of. Did you hear that from <laughs> someone who was actually going to make a bid on it? I heard that from a general contractor that does prevailing wage. Okay. So but that, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions for Kyle? Lloyd, did you have anything? Uh, any reports, you mean? Yes. Um, I do not. Rob, do you have any reports? I just want to thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to mention three things. Uh, my compliments to the city on putting this program together. That's, that's great. Uh, I think that that will fit in nicely when the city joined the county at the ICSC retail uh, trade show coming up in May. And so I think that'll be... Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, this will be a good opportunity for the city to promote uh, this program to retailers and, and restaurants and so forth at the show. So I think that'll the timing is perfect. Um, one of the things that the county does is operate a small business, de small business development center. And essentially, simply put, it's, it's an SBA-funded program. And there's two in the Inland Empire. One is the Inland Empire Center, and then there's the county run, um, which is based in the Coachella Valley. We have kind of done some shifting, and the Coachella Valley Center is kind of 
creeping over into the pass area. It stopped at Cabazon before, and now it's going to go all the way to Calamesa. So in my mind, and when we work with, obviously we operate the one and we, op and we work with the Inland Empire Group, that's going to be good news for this region because our goal and objective is to bring more services here locally and a greater presence. And Kyle and I have been having discussions about what that's going to look like going forward. So we as a county are excited about it, and I think it's, it's an area that's going to allow us to provide more coverage here in the pass. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, one of the things that we just had our kickoff meeting today uh, that we've always been challenging with is telling the Riverside County story. And that story varies from region to region. Um, what the story was 10 years ago isn't necessarily the story today. So we're working with our Visit Greater Palm Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, they are our partner. We've hired a, a branding consultant to help us encapsulate what that Riverside County story is, honoring our history, honoring our diversity, but also looking forward to the future of what Riverside County is, is turning into in terms of an economy and a region that's going to help us with our messaging. It's going to help us with our branding going forward, and it's something we've long wanted to do, and, and uh, uh, the timing and funding is aligning right, so we're excited. As part of that effort, there's going to be focus groups throughout the county. Uh, Kyle, I kind of volunteered the city as a location to host one of those, if that's okay, uh, at some point in the next few months. So I'll coordinate with you so that we can uh, get the word out to individuals. and Because we want it to be a stakeholder-driven process. It's not just us creating something. We want to hear from residents and business owners throughout the county about how they feel about things, what they want to see, and kind of helping us formulate that story. So we're pretty excited about that, and that's, uh, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Steve, do you have anything to report? No report. I look forward to the launch and the results. Thank you. What, okay. This is a mistake. You'll get it. Mr. Rader, do you have along. anything to add or as an alternate, is he not allowed to add? No, he can absolutely add. <laughs> no, ma'am. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Mr. Lawson? You gave her the gavel, so you know you're, you have to deal with it. <laughs> it's a hammer at home. <laughs> <laughs> just to, just to, to, to piggyback, outstanding report, Mr. Warsinski. It's so good to see this. I will report that your, your education partner, Mount San Jacinto College, uh, we feel like we're back. Uh, we're 15% up in our enrollment, and we, we, are, we are heading back into normalcy, and so we're very excited about that. Our campuses are packed with students, and so if you have young people or even mid-career individuals who are interested in, in training, send them our way. We're excited. Also, uh, we've had an opportunity uh, to begin the process of opening the doors of our ERIC, our, our business incubator. Uh, they're going to house it right there on the campus, so if you have businesses or would-be entrepreneurs or businessmen who are interested, uh, we'll have them uh, have, they can contact Dr. Ralph Berry III. Uh, he is the individual that they've met. We've worked with Mr. Warsensi, so he knows him. And uh, they can begin to, to uh, get the, the resources necessary to have a successful business venture. So uh, we'll bring you more information on that as we get going. We'll be located in Building 100 uh, down there on our campus, just 15 minutes away, so people can set up and uh, begin to uh, operate uh, their business there. So uh, that's all we have to report right now. We'll bring you more information as we grow, as we continue to grow. Thank you very much. Ms. Rader, I don't typically have a report, but I do have one this evening, if, if I may. Yes. Um, I'm going to hand this out, but the um, Economic Development Committee Policy and Procedures was updated um, last night um, at the council meeting. So I wanted to hand out the changes that were made, um, and then I can go through them quickly. So there was some change to the um, the make of the committee. Um, you'll see that the members, the business community members, instead of making it a um, mandatory that it's a business community member, now there's the wording of preferably um, to make it open to be able to um, acquire more members. Um, 
We have also changed the Beaumont Unified High School student to a Beaumont Youth Council member. Beaumont Youth Council is a brand new um, youth council that's been created and their first meeting is going to be next week. Um, so we'll be looking forward to appointing um, one of those members to be part of this group. Um, there is a mistake on here I do need to correct. It says there will be 14 voting members. Um, it will now reflect with the changes made. Um, it'll be 11 voting members. And section five on the back, typically we go dark in the month of July, um, but we left it open um, in case there is any sort of business that needs to be had. Um, we can still con conduct a meeting in July, um, but in any event that there's no business to conduct, a meeting may be canceled. And that's all that I had to share with you, and I can email this out in the final version to everyone. Any questions for Nicole? Yeah. Thank you very much, Nicole. Welcome. I'm the rainbows and unicorns person, and so good morning, Beaumont is Friday. We already have 104 reservations, so it's pretty full. We've done that two months in a row, so business could not be better at the chamber. We do have our uh, citizen of the year, an installation that's coming up February 23rd. Um, most of the city is signed up. Rob, I don't know if you want to come on. And that's all I have to report. Um, are there any uh, topics for future agendas? Hearing none, um, we can adjourn the meeting at 436. I think that's a record. <laughs>know the meeting's over but I did want to thank everyone for I mean, what we did on the economic development committee over the last year to get this this program that Kyle talked about um, yeah.